Wings by Sea Chaps and Chappuses on the Globewood Critic. Guys, can you guess what most actors in both Hollywood and Bollywood have in common? Well, as it turns out, in some point of their careers, they have done action-oriented films. Hollywood greats from the 70s to the 90s era like Arnold Schwarzenegger, Harrison Ford, Robert De Niro, Sylvester Stallone, Bruce Willis, Keanu Reeves, Eddie Murphy, Tom Cruise, Will Smith, etc etc all the way up to the next generation of leading males like Chris Hemsworth, Chris Pine, Christian Bale, Gerard Butler, Liam Hemsworth, Tom Hardy, Vin Diesel Even Bollywood have its greats from stars like Amitabh Bachchan, Vinod Khanna, Darminder, Rishi Kapoor, Anil Kapoor, Jackie Shroff, Govinda, Sunny Diol, Junkie Pandey, Amir Khan, Sanjay Dutt, Salman Khan, Ajay Devgan, Akshay Kumar, Shahrukh Khan, Saif Ali Khan, Snail Shetty, Bobby Diol, Riddick Roshan, John Abraham. <laughs> Whoa! There's loads of them in both industries, but we will be looking at two actors in particular, Harrison Ford and Bobby Diol, along with their two best performances, that is The Fugitive and Gupt. Yeah, this is what I'm talking about. I freaking love these two films. Two fictional characters find themselves framed for murders of their family members, only for them to escape prison through different means and find out who the real culprits of these crimes are. Okay, I know what most of you are going to say. The film Criminal, directed by Mahesh Bhatt, was in fact the initial remake to The Fugitive, but honestly, there were more similar moments from the original, as well as more elements of surprise that were added into the film Gupt to make it a much better remake. But which one of these two is better, the original or the remake? So, let's take a look in this comparison. This is The Fugitive vs. Gupt. So let's begin off this comparison by starting off with Best Leading Male. Harrison Ford vs. Bobby Diol. Now if you've seen both films, you know fully well that both these two characters are completely different in terms of class, occupation and of course the circumstances that land them both framed for murder. In The Fugitive, you have Richard Kimball, played by Ford. He is shown to be a respected vascular surgeon for a local hospital in Chicago, leading a happy and content lifestyle with his wife Helen, played by Sella Ward. His life is suddenly crushed one fateful night as he finds Helen murdered and framed for the crime due to a misunderstood 911 call. And the police close the case as they assume the reason of the crime was for Richard to collect his deceased wife's inheritance. In Gupt, on the other hand, you have Sahil Sinha, played by Diol. He instead is shown to be a college ruffian who, in spite of being adopted into a rich family with a stepfather whom he despises, he chooses to live according to what he wants. On one day he's reunited with his childhood love Isha, played by Garjal, only to find his stepfather, Governor Jay Singh Sinha, played by Raj Bhabhar, disapproves of their relationship, which only increases the motive of wanting to have his stepfather out of his life. But as it turns out the next day, the governor is murdered in his study, only to find all the evidence points to Sahil from the previous night. Now I don't know, which one of these two gives a more convincing performance? Now honestly, in terms of charisma and better performance in drama, I'm going to have to go with Ford on this one. Don't get me wrong, I love Dio's performance as Sahil in Gupt, as his image provides more glamour, plus he has more moments where his fists and feet do all the talking. But there are more moments where throughout his investigation, help is at hand for him in form of two female friends. Ford's performance as Richard stood out more, as from his emotions, facial expressions, and his interaction with the cast, he's acknowledging to both the audience and cast what he's lost. His wife, his life, his reputation, and his dignity. Okay, there are more moments where the action scenes could have been improved, 
but as from previous films that Ford has starred in, he makes up for it with quick thinking moments, allowing him to be triumphant in any action scene. DL, I love you loads, but Ford wins this round. Point goes to the West! Now we come to the supporting cast, and my goodness, both these two films had some. <laughs> now seeing as though both films do have a couple of female leads, I thought we'd begin this part of the comparison with them. In The Fugitive, both Seller Ward and Julianne Moore's performances were kept to a minimal. Ward only appeared in flashbacks as the wife of Richard, and Moore appeared as the doctor who discovers Richard's identity after he subsequently saved a child's life while posing as a janitor to continue his investigation. Now to be honest, I actually did prefer both characters' performances as it added a bit more depth and progression to Richard as one helps provide his backstory on how happy and content his lifestyle was and then there's one who conflicts on whether or not to have him sent to the authorities after seeing him do good. Gopd on the other hand has two female leads, Isha played by Gajal and Sheedal played by Manisha Gorala, both of whom help with Sile's investigation while at the same time rival for his affections. Now as much as I preferred Gajal's performance as Isha in terms of drama and charisma in this flick as opposed to Gorala's portrayal of Sheedal, but there were more moments when she was not present and Sahil was continuing his investigation, except for when they are both in hiding and when they kidnap and interrogate one of the suspects. Now I'm going to be honest, I'm not a fan of Gerala's performances that much, but having said that, she actually did a good job with her role in this flick. She was loyal, goal-driven and quick to react even when Sahil needed help to escape from the authorities. Well, that's the female leads, but what about the other supporting cast? The supporting cast in The Fugitive focuses on two groups of people, i.e. figures in the medicine field and figures of authority. Both groups play a key role as there are some who believe Richard is innocent and others who believe he is guilty. Some big names within these groups are Joe Pantoniello, the late Andreas Katsulas, Joran Kravath, L. Scott Caldwell, Ron Dean, and Jane Lynch. Gopd, on the other hand, improves on their supporting cast with various different stereotypes, such as power-hungry politicians, wealthy industrialists, corrupt factory union leaders, crafty lawyers, and loyal personal assistants, with big names like Brian Chopra, Dalit Tahil, Sharad Saxena, Harsh Patel, Raza Murad, Parish Ravel, Anjan Shivastav, Gulbashan Karbadda, and Priya Tendulka, most of whom believe Sayo is guilty, but seem to have supposed hidden motives against the governor, but trying to keep themselves protected without any of their ill deeds exposed. That is until Sahil himself begins his investigation using their motives to interrogate them one by one to find out who is responsible for the heinous crime, providing some casualties with humorous results. But the big decider for me are the two cops that are pursuing both the main leads. After the local police fail to obtain and capture Richard, they bring in Deputy US Marshal Samuel Gerard, played by Tommy Lee Jones, into this investigation. Now I should point out that also two actors, John Voigt and Gene Hackman, were considered for the role. But personally, Jones in my opinion was probably the best choice. Not only did he bring in a powerhouse performance, his line delivery while speaking with authority is often laughable, to the point that his character is likeable. Plus what I find odd about him is that while he doesn't care if Richard is innocent or guilty, while hell bent on having him recaptured, he, for some strange reason, begins doing a little investigation of his own into this matter, using the words Richard said during his trial to solve the case himself. If you were Richard Kimball, why would you hunt for a one-armed man you say killed your wife, break into his house, call us up, and then split? Doesn't make any sense. I should have been a doctor. Now who do you suppose they give Jones' role to in the remake? Now unlike the original, where they bring in a federal deputy, they instead have an unorthodox and no-nonsense suspended cop 
Inspector Udham Singh, played by the brilliant Orm Buri, gets brought into the case. Now this, in my opinion, was a stroke of genius, as not only does he also give a powerhouse performance like Jones, he is also more goal-driven, as he's only been sent in by superiors, along with two dim-witted cops, played by Ashok Sarov and the late Sadashiv Abrabuka, to ensure Sahil is recaptured. Plus one other reason that Udham was better is that he provides a moral to the film that even those who are incorruptible as well as low in class are smarter than the opposites in doing their jobs. The only time he switches sides is after a standoff with Sahil during an abduction of another suspect but finds himself unable to shoot Sahil as Sahil claims this revelation changes Udham's perception towards Sahil that he lets him go. Now how does he solve the case while letting the lead go? Well, as it turns out, only one scene was filmed when he noticed that both knives from the victims were of the same brand. However, the investigation itself was done off screen as means to provide the element of surprise which Udham does when revealing vital evidence regarding the weapons used. So by close call, my vote goes to the remake. Don't get me wrong, I like the cast of the original, but as I said before, the vast majority of the cast consists of doctors and police officers. Gupt does it better with its wide choice of stereotypes, as well as a mix of various different motives. Point goes to the East! Yeah! Now it all comes down to our final factor, it's the story. Okay, both films have scenes which are similarly used to almost make it look like it's the same story told. Scenes like the courtroom, escape through the drainage, one or two of the escapists getting killed, etc etc. But which one told the story better, while at the same time had stunning visuals to shock the audiences? Okay, both films have two main heroes who are framed for the murders of their loved ones, one being the wife and the other being the stepfather and the police conclude that their supposed motives could have been gaining inheritance or just pure hatred. But let's find out about the backstories of their loved ones and to find out if there was any hidden motive. In The Fugitive, only a small reference is made about Richard's wife Helen being rich and him being the sole beneficiary of her lucrative life insurance. But from Richard's given personality, he was not remotely interested in gaining the inheritance to himself as he loved her. In the opening scene of Gupt, the governor is shown to be renowned as an even-handed man, with associates who advise him to think carefully about his actions in doing good for the country. However, little does the governor know that some of the associates have ulterior motives against him. He struggles to maintain a strong relationship with his stepson, Sahil, as the latter only sees him as his mother's second husband, showing his dislike towards him. Sahil's increasing motive of getting rid of his stepfather out of his life almost comes head to head, which resulted in insult to injury as during his birthday, the governor declares Sahil's engagement to Sheetal instead of his own girlfriend Isha. Angrily stupefied by his stepfather's decision, Sahil furiously aims a knife at him, only to be stopped by his mother. But what about the circumstances and how do they find their loved ones murdered? Richard, while driving home with Helen after a charity fundraiser, is all of a sudden asked to resume emergency duty back at the hospital. Helen remains at home, only to be murdered by a one-armed man, who, as it turns out, was ordered to kill Richard. Now, as the movie progresses on, it is discovered that a former police officer, Frederick Sykes, played by Katsulas, was the man responsible for Helen's murder, but is also working for a pharmaceutical company scheduled to release a new drug called Profasic, a drug Richard was preventing from being approved by the FDA due to its severe cause of liver damage. Sahil, on the other hand, gets heavily drunk the next day and decides to go and confront his stepfather. However, by the time he gets home, he finds the governor has been stabbed by an unknown assailant. His only vital evidence found is a locket. However, after unintentionally touching the knife, his mother appears with the assumption that her son murdered her husband. And as the film progresses on, we see that while Sahil interrogates all of the associates who testified against him, 
Their ill deeds and their ulterior motives are exposed to the audience, but they all deny their involvement in not only the governor's murder, but of Dr. Gandhi's as well. Now the only problem I have with the story in Gupt is that for Sahil, help is at hand from both Isha and Sheetal, who help him investigate who the real culprit is. The story in The Fugitive develops more on Richard's persona, since while not having any help, he cleverly uses his knowledge about medicine to find out whom the real culprit behind Helen's murder is. But the big decider for me, and what differentiates the two films, are the motives and who both the masterminds of these heinous crimes are. In The Fugitive, it turns out one of Richard's close friends and colleague, Dr. Charles Nichols, played by Crabbeth, was the mastermind behind Helen's murder and the attempted murder of Richard to ensure the new drug was to be approved by the FDA. Richard confronts him at the Pharmacon conference and even accuses him of falsifying his medical research. Their confrontation then escalates to a fistfight between the two, while being chased by the police and marshals into the hotel laundry room. And after realising his ill deeds have been exposed by Samuel, Charles attempts to shoot him, only to be subdued by Richard from behind and rendered unconscious. In Gupt, it turns out the man was supposedly responsible for killing both the governor and the doctor was in fact the governor's PA and Isha's father, Ishwar Divan, played by Ravel. However, the motive behind both the murders is actually true to the story. The motive being that the governor and the doctor were hell-bent on ensuring Sahil and Isha would not get together that they rudely rejected Ishwar's pleas to accept both the lovers. But the mystery doesn't end there, as the true culprit is revealed as Isha, when Sahil opens the locket he found to find both his and her pictures in it. After Sahil confronts Ishwar about the locket, it is then revealed that after the rude rejection from both the governor and the doctor, it drove Isha to the point of insanity, as it seemed everyone was against her and Sahil's relationship. So the motive there for killing the two men was for her love and fear of losing Sahil. Now I'm not sure if Gargil did any research before doing this particular role, but it almost seemed as if she incorporated moments of her personality in comparison to Anthony Perkins' role of Norman Bates in the 1960s film Psycho, for there were more moments from her jealous expressions that it looked as if a split personality was about to erupt. But as explained earlier, the cause of her possessive nature was fear of losing the man she loves. And to ensure audience satisfaction, after she gets shot by Udham, Sahil forgives her for her ill deeds and claims he always belonged to her before she dies in his arms. Now honestly for me, this was a much better story in terms of motive and moral, while at the same time, you do feel sorry for both Sahil and Isha as the circumstances and complications of their love had them in life-threatening situations. Don't get me wrong, I do enjoy the story of the fugitive, but for me, the ending was a tad bit cliched. The culprit is caught, but the hero is also taken away from the crime scene as means of being exonerated or persecuted. But given from Samuel's expressions, we all know that he'll see Richard is cleared of all charges. Thought you didn't care. I don't. <laughs> The storyline for Gupt had you glued to your seats with its intense scenes, more action scenes and overall more elements of surprise which honestly was much more thrilling and overall entertaining. So by a tad fraction in terms of story, morals, visuals and better choice of supporting cast, I'm going to say hands down, Gopt is a superior film. So there you have it, Gopt beats the fugitive in this comparison giving Bollywood another point on the leaderboard. I'm the Global Critic. Until next time, Arj Gilir, Alamidar, Meridesi Loko.